Hello and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before or welcome if you are new. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Melissa and as you can see, I've got my Bath & Body Works apron on. I actually was one of the part-time managers at my local Bath & Body Works for about six years. So this is actually the part two video of a Q&A all about Bath & Body Works, Ask an Employee Anything. So if you haven't seen it yet, I've got it linked right up above at the top, the part one to this video. That way you can watch some of the previous questions I was asked and see what the answers are but today we are going to be tackling the other half of the questions that I have yet to answer. Hello, it's the editing version of me. I just wanted to add something really quick. I actually had enough questions for this Q&A video to split the second part into two, so there will actually be an additional third part coming out the following week after this on a Monday. So definitely stay tuned for that, and now on to the questions. Just as a quick disclaimer, I no longer work for the company, so I am free to share my opinion and testimonies however I want. Um, do understand that I am speaking from personal experience, not for the company. Everything that I'm going to be sharing today um, is going to be my opinion. As factual as this information may be, there is a chance that I could be wrong sometimes if I am um, trying to spew some facts. Um, forgive me for that if that ever happens, but I just thought I'd put in that little disclaimer so I don't get misquoted or anything weird like that. It might be a long one, so you might want to grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. Did you ever have a really scary customer that made you feel threatened? And if so, how did you handle it? Um, I was fortunate enough that I didn't have any situations that were extremely scary where I felt um, threatened for my life or threatened for my safety. Um, a couple of times I did have some frustrating customers and I did have some mean customers that uh, made me wanna cry a little bit. Um, I didn't cry, but I wanted to. Um, and then there were a couple of slightly intimidating situations in which um, I knew customers maybe had, or customers had bad intentions. The one that sticks out in my mind that actually made me hurt the most, I think, was one time I was having some manager problems already and so I was kind of having a bad work day. Um, I was just really not in the mood to be tested and by the way, I had three managers during the course of my employment. Two of them were not very good and then one of them was good. So in the weird event that uh, one of my past managers is watching this, uh, hopefully you're the good one. I think the only one that would bother to watch my videos is probably the good one, so. So at that time I had manager issues. I was just having a really bad day. And so a customer walks in and I'm not a very sharky employee. I am pretty good at reading people and knowing uh, when to not pursue somebody too much. I mean, I do have to do my job still and it was our responsibility to make everyone feel welcome and greet them and acknowledge them and make sure that they weren't looking for something specific so we could just get them in and out right away if they were. If they just wanted to look and they said that, like. I can pick up a hint and if you want to be left alone to shop, I'll totally leave you alone for a while. I'm an introvert at heart, so I'm totally okay with not talking to people if I can help it. I walked up to her, kept a good distance, but just kind of like from afar, I was like, oh, hey, was there something you were looking for specifically? And she gives me the hand. She goes, I'm just looking. It's so annoying to have to come in here. I hate employees that just won't leave me alone. And I mean, it was weird because it was literally like a hello, how are you conversation. We didn't talk enough to even get to that point. I only said like, hi, how are you? Can I help you find something? That's literally it. You could have just said no, walked away, and it would have been fine. But she felt it in her heart to just kind of verbally attack me. And that does happen quite a lot, actually. Um, but for some reason, this one particular lady really bothered me. Like I said, I was already having a bad day, so I just kind of like took myself to a corner and just kind of like composed myself and tried my best to ignore it and like kind of swallowed down that lump in your throat where you feel like when you're gonna get cry or something. I, I made a pact to myself I was not going to involve myself with her. Actually, I think she must have noticed that maybe I looked sad or something like that or hurt. Go figure, of course, guess who has a question about the hand soap? So she comes over to me and she's like, you know, I'm really sorry about earlier. It's just the music is so loud. It's like, I just can't focus and I just hate the music that you play in here. And I was like, at least you can run away from the music. I have to listen to it for eight hours a day, five days a week. I hate it. I think she was like, oh, I never thought of that. I have ears and I have to listen to this bad music. I'm a music major, so music is work for me. It is not play. I view it in such a way that music, if it's gonna be playing, I have to focus on it or else um, it's just a distraction. And so I don't do background music well either. I did like that story in the sense that it came full circle where I think she finally remembered that like, 
employees are humans and don't treat customer service people that way because they have it worse than you. And don't come in to buy hand soap if you can't handle it. Something that was interesting though is we did one time have a scary looking customer come in who was actually um, super sweet. He was like this bald guy. He had tattoos and he like was missing teeth and he's a smoker. Oftentimes when someone like that comes in, you're not quite sure if they're there to buy maybe a gift or if they're just gonna I don't know, harass the employees because usually, at least in my location, like tough guys don't come into our store. It's just like not really the demographic that we serve too often. So he comes in and I've got my guard up a little bit. I'm just like, oh, what can I help you find today? And you know, just the normal stuff. And he was like, I love the scent cocktail dress. Do you have any of that in stock? And I was like, oh, he knows my scents. He knows like my products. And so um, we actually became pretty good like worker to customer friends, so to speak. And he would come in and be like, oh, where's Melissa? I got a shop and I got to get my shower gels. A good reminder to not judge a book by its cover. Next question. What are your top three favorite gourmand scents? And what is your favorite to wear around Christmas? I love gourmand fragrances, which is funny because like I mentioned in my previous video, none of my coworkers and none of my customers that would come to me in my local store liked gourmand fragrances. It was like I was the only one in the world. And so when I uh, joined kind of this online community of Bath and Body Works fans, I was like, oh, other people like gourmand fragrances. I think if I were to have to choose three only, which is really difficult, it would be marshmallow pumpkin latte. I really have had a thing for Santa's blueberry shortbread. I don't know why, but that one's popping into my mind as a favorite. I love that scent. Um, it's kind of an underrated one that didn't get that much attention, I feel like. I love coconut fragrances. Um, it's kind of like my signature thing. I used to always wear coconut fragrances even before I was into Bath and Body Works, so I'm just trying to think. At least lately, I've been really enjoying this just straight up coconut one, which is technically a duplicate of Bali Black Sands, I believe. That one's um, definitely high up there for me. Christmas cookies, I've been really enjoying that one. Oops, now that's four. I mean, ask me in like a month and I'd probably change my answers, but Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte is gonna be top one gourmand fragrance for me. Oh, and my favorite to wear around Christmas. So every year, traditionally, I wear Twisted Peppermint, but in terms of favorite, like I said, the blueberry short, Santa's Blueberry Shortbread and then Christmas Cookies, it's kind of like, if I could only choose one to ever wear again, it would be that one, but um, historically, Twisted Peppermint is kind of like my signature Christmas fragrance. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. What are your favorite scents from back in the day? Like Cucumber Melon, Sweet Pea, Warm Vanilla Sugar, ETC. My favorites of those, I love Cucumber Melon. That one's classic. Um, Sweet Pea is definitely like an OG uh, fragrance for me and I will always love that one. It was probably the first fragrance I've ever smelt by Bath & Body Works um, when I was like in third grade. Country Apple is worthy. How often do brand new products and scents come in? Um, usually Bath & Body Works will have a new floor set about once a month, or if you look at it from a seasonal point, usually um, three floor sets a season. Yeah, so I guess that would be like one a month. Also, if you do get the coupons in the little coupon pamphlet, if you look at the date that the coupon expires, usually the following day after that date, uh, will be a brand new floor set. So that's a good time to go in is right when your coupons expire. Um, I know you wanna use your coupons, but if you're looking for brand new fragrances, that's when uh, your store will probably have the new stuff in. What is your current favorite scent and product? <laughs> so hard. Um, what's my favorite scent? We can go with traditional because I have kind of like these signature fragrances that I wear every year. And like, if you smell that, you know I've walked by cause that's like a Melissa scent. Waikiki Beach Coconut, Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte, um, Lavender uh, Spring, Apricot, and Lavender. I love that fragrance, it's so good, and I have not seen it come back, although the Cozy Sunday Morning was very, very similar to it, and so was the Lavender Cotton something or other. I'll put a picture of it there. Those two were the closest I've seen to it, but nothing compares to that Lavender Apricot, it's so good. But if we're talking a little more current and modern, um, I've really, really, really had a thing for strawberry soda, and I don't know why, it's just it's so good, and it's funny because um, I was watching some other YouTube videos of people saying that they weren't like that enchanted, by it or they didn't care for it. It's not that it was bad, but it didn't like do anything for them. I can't get enough of it. I'm like obsessed with strawberry soda right now. So I'll say that that one is a new favorite fragrance for me. A uh, favorite product. I will always use Bath and Body Works candles over other candles. I really love 
the oil to cream cleansers. If you ever see those in stock, I think the last time they had them was last summer or maybe a summer before that um, in the coconut and it was in their wellness collection. I'll put a picture up there. But um, they also had some in the Coco Shea line back when they were doing that. And then also they've had some in the aromatherapy collection a couple of times as well. It's a really great product. So if you ever see those come in, I definitely suggest trying them out. What was your favorite collections over the years? This is a good one. Body care and home fragrance. Um, I'll put pictures up here, but some that come to mind, I really, really appreciated many summers ago, um, the fragrance mists that had the straws that like the stripy straws because they were inspired by drinks. They had like little stripy straws as the actual straw nozzle for the fragrance. Wonderful packaging and all of the fragrances from what I remember were really good too. I'll put a picture up there. More modern, I love that fruity um, collection that they did with cherry limeade and strawberry soda and mango mai tai, so on and so forth. Um, that collection up there. I slept on it, unfortunately. I got the cherry limeade and I got the strawberry soda, but for some reason I didn't buy the others and I really regret it, so I wish I did. But I do know what all the others smell like. All of them are really good. I'm just gonna give a moment because I had actually um, looked this up earlier and have a folder on my computer collecting pictures of my favorite collections. Um, so I'll just take a moment up here to kind of rotate through some of my favorites. I've loved a lot of the fall collections. There were some that I thought were really underrated, um, but over here is just kind of panning through. I just love some of these. So tell me if you recognize any of those pictures up there. Um, as for candles, there were ones with the little woodland critters. That was my favorite collection of the candles is anything to do with uh, fall and like woodland critters and like frosted colored matte um, colored jars. I love that stuff. Did you have to throw away a lot of perfectly good product and do returned items just go in the trash? How much waste goes on? I want to know all the tea. Um, yes, we did have to throw some perfectly good products away. Um, I tried to be as good as I could about it, but policy is that um, with returns that are used or products that are damaged, we do have to squeeze them entirely out into the trash can. So we did have to throw away, it was considered theft if people were to dumpster dive. So it was company policy. We scoop everything out of the bottle or squeeze everything out of the bottle. Um, we did have to smash candles if they were already smashed. We would just smash them further and deface them with, like with a marker or whatever. Um, it is kind of sad. You do get um, desensitized to it a little bit too um, when you have to do it. Most of the time things were um, salvageable. Like if it were banged up, usually if it were like the last one of a fragrance, a customer wouldn't mind buying a banged up one. Or something that I would do too is if we had to make testers of the soaps and put tester caps on them, I would actually wash and save the pumps so that way if one ever broke like the pump I could actually just trade out the pumps and save a soap so like I would do my best uh, personally I don't know if other employees do that or if they care or not. I was trying to be meticulous about it and I would like kind of do my best to try and salvage what I could. Um, also testers do have to do that too. Something that was important when working there is to have really good communication with your other coworkers because um, you can really help prevent a lot of waste if you're not making um, duplicate testers and stuff like that. I know sometimes like during the holiday season when we would have to have multiple tables of the same fragrance, like say you have a, a feature table of Thousand Wishes and you also have a lotion table over here that also has Thousand Wishes and you know, you just like have five of the same tester of a product that could be pretty wasteful during the holidays. So I remember um, trying to work with um, the other coworkers to make sure like, okay, I already have a tester here, just use this one and stuff like that. So we weren't having to test out a whole bunch of product if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I was known for this at work. This is probably naughty, but um, I was known for playing with product as if it were like making potions and stuff. It's kind of naughty. If I knew I had to dispose of a product, I would usually play with it. I would make a mess sometimes, you know, like those foaming, um, what were they? Shapeable hand soap, that's what it was. Um, I definitely squeezed, like it's like an aerosol can and it comes out in a fluff. I squeezed the entirety of a can out because it was a tester and we didn't have any left and I don't think anyone had used it. So I squeezed the entire thing into the trash can it was bigger than my body, like the amount of like fluff. So I had this and I definitely threw it at a coworker. So um, it was messy, but um, I, my feeling was as if I was being forced to waste this product, I might as well have some fun with it first. So, um, and then sometimes too, we can use like testers of hand soaps in the back room, uh, room sprays and wallflowers if they're damaged and stuff, if they're already ran through the system as damaged or tested out, um, we would like use them in the back room, like just for back room use. So yeah, waste happens, it's inevitable, but um, 
I know some employees care more than others and try to not be as wasteful. What's your favorite season? Fall, definitely autumn. Mine is fall, followed by Christmas. Yes, that's probably me too, although I'm not sure. I, um, the older I get, the less I like winter, um, because here in Idaho, um, we are going on our sixth or seventh month of snow and cold, and I'm just so sick of it. I just want summer so bad. So I've actually, um, come to appreciate summer more, so I might have to say autumn is first, and then summer is in second place. What scent would you make if you got to mix one? <gasps> I've never thought of this. Um, if I were to make my own fragrance, it would definitely be Gourmand. I feel like Bath & Body Works is lacking caramel. I don't feel like they have many good like salted caramel scents or, or anything caramel. I would make a really good salted caramel biscotti fragrance. Also, I feel like they could do better with um, some coffee fragrances. I know they had the vanilla cafe mocha or something like that. Um, and I smelt it and there was kind of like a floral note in it that just wasn't doing it for me. I would make like a true coffee fragrance and maybe pair it with a little bit of chocolate. I'd probably work on making a really good coffee fragrance and then salted caramel biscotti, something about that. I just made that up now. That sounds really good. I'd like that um, with like the little bit of almond extract in it. That would be nice. Also like some true lemon scents. Um, I feel like all of the citruses are paired with florals and I would like it to be like more of a true citrus note, but I feel like they need like a classic, like a lemon scent. They used to have limoncello, which is probably more what I'm thinking of, but that would be nice if they could do like some type of sparkling sugar lemon drop something or other. Okay, another question. Why did you leave the company? I originally left the company because of COVID. I didn't want to sell um, when COVID was a thing and my town was kind of slow to react to it. I'm an introvert, so I was already kind of having this uh, moral issue of not feeling truly myself because you're supposed to be like this bubbly, um, turned on kind of person all the time and um, I'm just not that person. The YouTube channel that I have now is actually a really good way for me to tie in all the things I like about Bath & Body Works and selling Bath & Body Works and all that stuff and um, negate all the things I don't like about it. I do actually have um, some sciatica problems. I always say that I was a part-time manager and I technically was but I was working full-time hours most of the time that I was there and um, I was made to stand a lot and I had sciatica nerve problems and so it was just increasingly getting worse and worse. Um, I do pretty well running, walking, um, exercising and all that stuff, but when you get me standing in one location, that's for some reason when I have issues. And then also lifting um, heavy boxes in the way that I was, was not doing me any favors either. I could handle it if it was once in a while, but I mean, eight hours of that every single day was, it was just, I was getting worse and worse. I wanted to actually be the person in the back room doing like the shipment and the floor sets and kind of like the organizing behind the scenes as opposed to being a seller, but I was always put um, to sell and that's just not really who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do permanently and so that's why I left. It was more of a personal reason. Um, I really did enjoy working for the company all in all. Also the pay could have been a little bit better after a certain point um, and part of it is it might vary uh, depending on what state you're in. I'm in Idaho so pay is already super low. Um, I kind of wished that I had gotten compensated a little bit more for the amount of effort I was putting in um, but that was kind of a I mean, it is what it is. What do you miss the most about working at Bath & Body Works? I think the thing I miss the most about it is um, just getting the inside scoop really fast and being able to see all the new products coming in and being able to be the first one to smell them and stuff and just um, being surrounded by it. Um, I love Bath & Body Works as a company and I'm actually, that's something that kind of set me different from like some of my coworkers and stuff is I was actually interested in Bath and Body Works um, and their history and like where they came from and kind of like the more vintage stuff and like stories of old, <laughs> olden days, I guess, um, and old products. And um, I, I liked researching about Bath and Body Works in my own time, um, besides just the products that were coming in. I love the fact that it started in the 90s and like the 90s was its own vibe and like I grew up in the 90s and so um, it just kind of like was meaningful to me for some reason. It was a part of my childhood and that was actually the store I was working in was the store that I shopped in um, as in grade school and stuff because um, I grew up in the town I was born in and still live here now. The store was really important to me and I really felt like it was my store. It was kind of like my baby. And so um, I think 
I just miss it because it felt like it was mine. Um, and so I guess that's the part I miss about it the most. How much did you hate floor sets? Um, <laughs> that's a funny question. Because everyone who has worked at a Bath and Body Works hates floor sets except literally me. I love floor sets. Um, they often did not go well. And that's the only reason I would hate a floor set is because they never give you enough hours for the amount of work you need to do. So for that reason, yes, I hate floor sets, but I love doing it. I love building the tables. I love organizing the back room and bringing out the new products and making displays and um, putting out I, yeah, that's just, that was my thing. And like I kind of mentioned before, I wanted to be a behind the scenes person. Um, and so I did do some running of the floor sets and stuff, but that was my jam. So ironically, um, I did not hate the floor sets, but I did hate that um, oftentimes I was given employees that had never done a floor set. And how do you train to do a floor set is you do the floor set. And so oftentimes we would be always running behind schedule, not getting what we needed done in time. So yeah, it was kind of chaos. So I don't blame anyone for not liking them. How does Bath and Body Works treat their employees? Um, all in all, pretty well. The jobs I have had, I've stayed in for a long time, so I don't really have much to compare to. Um, I worked as a barista in a local coffee shop, and then I worked in a local music lessons, like teaching music lessons. And so it was the first um, place that I had worked for that was a corporate as opposed to like a local business. So. Um, for comparing, I felt a little bit looked over compared to my previous uh, places of employment, um, but that's to happen. If you were to make sales plan for your store, um, you would get a bonus and stuff like that. And so I thought that that was kind of nice. Um, I do wish that the pay was a little better, but I think that might be more of an Idaho issue as opposed to a Bath and Body Works issue. Um, I'm not exactly sure. As mentioned before, during my duration of employment at Bath and Body Works, I had three different managers. One of them did um, take my feelings into consideration while the other two did not. Um, and so it really depends, not even as a corporate level, but it really depends on who you've got in your store um, on a local level. What were your employee perks? All associates get 30% off discount. Unfortunately, you can't use that discount on top of in-store promotions. So the in-store promotions plus coupons ended up being a better deal than the discount. I would only ever use that discount on like things like loofahs or full price wallflower plugs that were fancy or whatever, things that don't normally go on any type of sale. The store manager and uh, full-time supervisors would get 40% discount. Same thing, they could not use it on in-store promotions. If you're salaried and full-time, you get benefits. If you work 40 hours, you get benefit health benefits, I believe. Um, I was working 39.5 hours. So I never got to enjoy that perk, nor do I know everything about it. So sorry, I couldn't answer that question. But I think for me on a personal level, the biggest perk of it was getting to see the fragrances first and kind of getting like first dibs and like planning out what you're gonna purchase and stuff like that. Um, they do have a couple rules. Some employers might be more sticklers than other, but sometimes we could like save things in the back room for us if we were going to buy them at the end of our shift. Before a big sale, I might pick out a couple things. What is the return and exchange policy and in your opinion, did customers abuse it? Yes, customers do abuse it, unfortunately. I had mentioned uh, this a lot in my previous video, actually about the TikTok people that they could bring in their empty bottles and just trade them in for new ones, which is not the case. Please don't do that. Return and exchange policy is actually quite generous, I find. Let's say you wanna return something. If you have a shower gel, let's say, you have three options. Either you provide a receipt that says that you bought that and then we can scan the receipt and give you a money refund based on whatever tender you use. So if you bought it with your debit card, we can refund it to your debit card. If you paid in cash, I can give you cash back. If you do not have the receipt, what we can do for you is um, return it. It will scan into our system at whatever um, like the lowest price point available for that item is since we can't prove how much you paid for it. Like let's say it's a shower gel you're returning that was $13.50 original price. Um, I would scan it on my computer and it'd say, oh, the lowest sale price for this item is $6.50. So I could give you that back by means of essentially like a gift card. It was called a merchandise card. And so it was pretty much just like a little debit card type of thing that you can use in store. The last thing you could do is you could exchange an item. So there were two ways you could exchange. You could do a, a like exchange. So if you wanted to give me back the shower gel, um, you could go and choose a different shower gel and we could trade it. That would be good for if like you didn't like the fragrance or if you accidentally got the wrong fragrance or something like that. You could just trade shower gel for shower gel, candle for candle, so on and so forth. Or what you could 
do, like let's say you spent $13.50, you have your receipt and you're getting $13.50 back, what you could do is just go around the store and find $13.50 worth of items and you could get that essentially paid forward to your next purchase. That's kind of like what the policies are of what you can do if you have something you wanna return or exchange. The items actually can be used if you would like to exchange or return. Um, we do ask kindly that it be half full or more um, because the point of the return or exchange is because either you didn't like the product or um, the product did not perform as expected and so when it does perform as expected and you're just trying to make some money or you're just trying to I don't know, jip the company and get some half a bottle of free product or something like that. I don't even know why people do stuff like that. I couldn't even tell you. But if you're trying to do something weird or whatever, um, that would be considered abusing the system and it does make it so that other customers can't enjoy that um, lenient exchange policy. What happens to the products that get returned? So if it is unused, and still a sellable item that is on our sales floor currently. It will just go right back on the shelf. Um, with COVID procedures, I think for a while they had like a 24 hours bin, they would sanitize the outside of it. It would sit in a box for like a day and then they'd put it back out or something like that. I didn't really work during the peak of like COVID regulations and stuff. For me, it was like 2019 and before they didn't care about COVID, it wasn't a thing then. So we would just throw them back out on the shelves. If it was used, and we can always tell if it's used or not. So um, oftentimes customers go, like, oh no, I never used it. But it was like, yeah, you did. But in the case that it was used, um, we do have to throw it away, unfortunately. Now, if it's like a wallflower or something, sometimes it might end up in the back room bathroom. Yeah, unfortunately, we would have to dump the product out um, just because of potential contamination. If a customer breaks something like candles or holders, do they have to pay for it? Yes, just kidding. Yeah, the whole you break it, you buy it thing. No, that's not a rule. Do employees get a heads up about upcoming sales? Technically, yes. Um, it kind of depends. What happens is, is we have like a company email that you can access on our computers at work and the company will send out an email usually around like 3 p.m. or whatever the halfway point through the day is and it will have um, the visual updates that will be for the following day or the weekend or whatever. And so if there's like a really big sale that we need to prep for in advance, like when candle day comes around, we will know that sometimes upward to a month in advance just so that we can prepare for it and make sure that we're well stocked and ready to go for it um because that does take a long time to prepare if it's just going to be like a little email blast like oh the room sprays are going to be 295 tomorrow or something like that like we probably won't know until right before close or at close. Um, and not everybody knows like usually it will be up to the closing manager to do the visual updates, but they will also have sales associates with them to help them. Um, but those sales associates might not know what's going on even until after close. So um, if you go up to an employee and be like, oh, what's the sale tomorrow? And they're like, oh, I don't know. They probably don't know. <laughs> there is a chance that they do know, and it is actually technically confidential uh, information, and we are not supposed to tell customers. So um, don't push employees to tell information that they're not allowed to tell. And just watch your email. You'll probably find out before the employees do half the time anyway. Now I have a question for you. You. Let me know down in the comments below the answer to this question. What is your favorite body care fragrance of all time? Also, if you have a question of your own that you would like to ask me about Bath & Body Works, being an employee, customer stories, scent recommendations, anything of the sort, then you can also leave that question down in the comment section below as well. Then I will do my best to answer that question in a future Q&A. So if I still haven't answered your question yet, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned because next week I'll be posting the part three of this Q&A with the Bath & Body Works manager video series. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.